Android engineer at Tumblr. And yeah, let's get started. So what is uh, dependency injection? Why would you want to make it asynchronous? I'm not sure. I mean, dependency injection itself is kind of crazy. So um, this talk kind of assumes that you know something about de dependency injection already, uh, and you know a little bit about how Dagger works, and, it's, uh, and Dagger 2 in particular. And um, we're going to build on Dagger 2 and make it asynchronous and by looking at uh, RxJava and uh, Dagger producers. Cool. So what is dependency injection? This is a really, really quick overview, kind of like uh, you're making a salad, and you take a cucumber uh, and a tomato, and uh, your salad depends on the cucumber and a tomato. I mean, what is a salad if you don't have those ingredients? Uh, maybe you can make salad with other ingredients, whatever, but this is uh, what the emoji looks like. Uh, it's kind of weird, though, because uh, when you do uh, norm when you have normal dependencies, uh, Without using dependency injection, you you type new. You go into you you have your your chicken in this case, and you type new egg, or you do uh, new poop. <laughs> um, but actually, when you when, what dependency injection does is you you invert that um, that the depend dependency hierarchy. So if you think about it, it's like you're taking an egg and some poop, and you're making a chicken. I don't I don't really know if that <laughs> why that makes sense, but that that is how basically what you're doing. Um, so it really depends uh, whether or not it makes sense on exactly what you're doing. Um, but in programming, it's just sort of like normal to us. Um, so why dependency injection? Well, let's say you're trying to make sushi. You've got fish. You've got rice. Um, but let's say you want to change the fish uh, to some tropical fish. There's a tropical fish emoji. I don't know what kind of fish it is. Maybe someone can tell me more. <laughs> uh, and you can still make sushi. Cool. So. Going right on to Dagger. Um, so let's say you're trying to make um, sushi and you're trying to put it into a bento box. Well, I don't know if any of you know what a bento box is, but it's, it's basically uh, a bunch of like uh, foods uh, put together in a box, like a lunch box, um, and they sell it in Japan and whatever. Uh, but here I'm going to use the, the bento box to represent the, the activity and the um, sushi to represent some sort of like dependency uh, that that activity needs. So here uh, with Dagger, we've got a sushi module. Uh, we've got fish, we've got rice, uh, and you've got this, the sushi that depends on the fish and the rice, and it creates a, a new piece of sushi. And so going back to that diagram before, uh, here in our bento box activity, uh, we're injecting a piece of sushi into our bento box. <coughs> um, what's important to note uh, here is, well, first of all, I'm using the diagram and Android stuff that uh, Ron probably talked about at his talk <laughs> a little bit. Um, so that's like the new thing in, uh, I think, Dagger 2. 11? Yeah. Uh, so that will make your life easier just using Dagger 2 normally. Um, but what's important to note is that, that all your dependencies are created here before on create. So this is happening on the main thread uh, <clears throat> before your, your layout is even displayed to the user. So if you have any sort of heavy dependencies, uh, this is all that all the all those things are being created on the main thread before your user even sees your activity, uh, and that's like not great, uh, especially uh, for app like Tumblr, uh, where we have a lot of dependencies, and uh, we're injecting and creating all of them up front uh, with the, the first time the user launches the app, and obviously uh, you 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 inject these dependencies because you're going to do something with them. Right, you shouldn't. So the, the the best way to improve performance is just not to just not inject dependencies you don't need. Uh, but you're here because you 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 have these dependencies that and you're trying to make them more performant. So here you can see it has, it's creating the, the fish first, uh, the, then the rice, then the then the sushi, then it can put it into the bento box, which is not performant. And it gets worse. 
like let's say we're trying to add, we add a salad to our bento box, right? So <laughs> now now we have to create all of these things before uh, we can display anything to the user. So one way of thinking about this, I mean, this 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 is how how <laughs> bento boxes work, right? They they uh, all the ingredients and all the things are already created uh, when you buy it. So one way around this is kind of like, and I'm, I'm using all these food analogies, uh, but uh, you, you can you can create dependencies lazily, uh, kind of like what a restaurant does. Uh, so you have sushi, uh, and then you've got empty plate to indicate, in our case, that uh, we're gonna we're going to have salad there. Uh, but if you were interested in eating the sushi first, then you can create the sushi first uh, and leave that empty plate. And then uh, when you ask for the salad, then the restaurant goes and deliver, creates, makes the salad, and then uh, <coughs> you're waiting for it, and then eventually you'll get to eat your salad. Uh, also, I don't know about you guys, but I tend to eat the salad last uh, because, <laughs> I don't know, I don't like salad. <laughs> And if I'm still hungry, that's what I end up eating. Cool. Uh, so what is asynchronous dependency injection? Well, we're, instead of creating all those things that we just saw uh, on the main thread, uh, we want to create uh, at least some of those dependencies, maybe even all of those dependencies, uh, off the main thread. Here I call this side thread. I thought I was being clever. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> so, one thing that's important to remember that, and, and this 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 actually often trips me up, is um, at the end of the day, like you're going, you're probably going to end up delivering uh, all these de dependencies that you're creating um, back to another thread, uh, and it's usually probably going to be the main thread. <clears throat> so it's important that to, to remember that. Uh, even if you moved all your dependencies to another thread, your, your, your user is still waiting on, on, on these dependencies. You're, like, let's say you're doing a network request or, or, or something like that. Even if you created the, the, the OKHP and, or whatever library to do your network request off the main thread, <clears throat> like it's, you, 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 you haven't necessarily finished what you're trying to do. Uh, just because you moved all your dependency off, these are dependencies that you're that you're using, uh, and <clears throat> so I mean, you're, obviously, you're not creating dependencies that you're not using. So <clears throat> uh, you you're, you're you need to use these dependencies. Uh, so really, when when you measure performance, you're you're probably going to look at. Uh, the, the entire goal from like beginning start starting from when the user opens the app to when not only when all the dependencies initialize, uh, but when they finish doing whatever you want them to do. <clears throat> so, uh, the reason why I went on that little rant is let's say uh, uh, it takes a little bit longer to create say sushi right now. Uh, the user is going to be waiting. Is, is waiting on both the sushi and the salad, right? Uh, so let's say the sushi is uh, being created on the main thread. The user isn't going to be uh, happy because like, there's going to be a spinner or the app is going to be frozen, uh, especially if you're doing the add inject like I was showing before. Uh, and no nothing's going to be happening. But let's say the salad is created like uh, on time, then like just because you moved that creation off the, the main thread, the user doesn't necessarily notice that performance benefit. Uh, now, now the cell is created, now the cell is just waiting for, for your main thread to finish uh, before anything can be shown to the, to the user. <clears throat> so another way of, uh, another thing that could also happen is, let's say, uh, the salad takes too long to make and the sushi is finished early, then, this, then you can, uh, uh, in practice, you can display the sushi, and then the, the user can go and eat it or whatever. Or you can they can do whatever they want to do. They can interact with the app, and they won't notice, or maybe they will notice if you have like some sort of spinner indicating it. Uh, but the salad isn't 
isn't finished, and then when the salad is finished, you can update the UI. So my point uh, with all of this is that uh, you wanna keep your main thread, um, whatever you're doing on the main thread, as quick as possible, so that's, uh, so you have the fastest sort of like time to interaction. Uh, and uh, on the side threads you wanna do, uh, on the background threads, you wanna do um, any sort of like slow operations, uh, <clears throat> such as like, like say networking here, this, like, this antenna was the, the most networking uh, related thing I could find. <laughs> uh, and e e even if you're showing a spinner to the user, I mean, that's something, as long as they can interact with the app, then I think they're a little bit uh, more satisfied. And remember, um, when you, the, the, the goal here is to reduce the amount of time uh, that the user perceives before they can uh, uh, say do whatever they're trying to do. So even even by moving things off to the background thread, it's uh, uh, probable that you've reduced the the absolute amount of time that is spent uh, waiting uh, because you are using these other the other cores on the on the phone and things like that. So I've been talking a lot uh, about emojis and salads and sushi, and, and I don't know if you guys are all confused, uh, so let's dive into some code. <laughs> um, we're gonna still stick with the same uh, sort of analogy here with the, the food. Um, so let's say you've got your, your salad module, you've got like your, your cucumber, your tomato, uh, <clears throat> and so there's a normal, like pretty straightforward uh, Dagger 2 implementation of of the uh, salad uh, being injected into your, your, your bento box. <clears throat> uh, so let's say uh, you wanted to do it uh, um, with this, this whole asynchronous dependency injection stuff with RxJava. Well, one way of doing it is uh, to make it lazy uh, and then call uh, get on the salad uh, on uh, another thread. So in this case, I've, I've removed a little uh, subscribe on uh, for another thread. So this is, this is all, this, this particular block of code is happening uh, on whichever thread you're calling this, uh, you're subscribing it on. Um, but this is sort of, uh, this is one way of like, now, now when it calls get, it's gonna create that dependency graph uh, off the main thread, uh, if you choose to. I don't know why you do all this if you didn't wanna move it off to another thread. You could have just called, called get uh, normally. Um, and then you can uh, run whatever method you want with the dependency. <clears throat> uh, but the problem, the problem with doing it that way is that, uh, first of all, uh, lazy, um, doing it this way, is, is that lazy, uh, will have a different instance uh, per uh, scope. So like let's say you have like an activity scope and say, say all this, this entire block of code is in your activity. Um, and then you start another activity and you do uh, lazy salad. Uh, then it would create another instance. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna be looking at Ron to make sure that I've said everything correctly. I did, <laughs> I did try to run this, so. <laughs> I think I'm, I'm somewhat confident in, in what I'm saying. Uh, so also, uh, you probably wouldn't want to like, every single time uh, you wanted to get a salad asynchronously, like, re, re, like write all this code. Uh, so another way of, of achieving this is to make uh, your salad module uh, have an observable, uh, as, as an observable. So you can, you can take that block of uh, that, uh, observable from callable, uh, and, but this time uh, <clears throat> your, your observable salad uh, will now take a, a lazy salad, and then whenever, whichever thing subscribes to this observable, uh, will go and, and it will go and go, call get on the lazy uh, salad, and that will actually call, cause the whole uh, dependency 
graph to be evaluated and, and then the sal will be created. Uh, so the benefit of one of the, obviously you're reducing the amount of code you're writing, the reducing the amount of boilerplate by doing this, uh, but also because this is a singleton, uh, you would be able to reuse uh, that instance uh, across, like, say, different activities, uh, and then you can call, like, you can you can subscribe to this multiple times, and you would get the same instance. Uh, also, partially because, uh, uh, well, it depends. Also, it depends on on what you mark the the lazy salad as. It could be singleton or not singleton or whatever. <clears throat> uh, so the way you use this is that you can you can still do add inject. Uh, remember, we're just only using. Uh, RxJava 2 here with Dagger 2. Uh, so you can do add inject uh, on the observable salad and subscribe. Now I'm, I've I specified that we're doing this on a computation scheduler. You should probably have your own, like, I don't know, dependency injection scheduler, uh, but whatever. Uh, and then when that uh, uh, salad is created, it will be passed to this uh, consumer and you can do whatever you want. I don't know. I don't know. Salad swim. <laughs> cool. So another way of doing this that is part of Dagger is a thing called Dagger Producers, and the documentation says it's an extension to Dagger that implements asynchronous dependency injection. So I went over how to do asynchronous dependency injection with RxJava. So how is this different? Uh, here uh, with Dagger two. Uh, producers, uh, they have a whole different set of annotations for uh, what are called uh, uh, producer modules and and like I don't know if they have there's a verb for it, but I call it production or something like that <laughs> uh, instead of uh, provides. So here you have uh, uh, module maps to producer module provides uh, maps to uh, produces, and that's all you have to change and does the rest of the work for you, pretty much. But there's a bunch of other work you have to do to set that up. Uh, you have to create a new, uh, in this case, I made a new app component. Uh, it depends, this, uh, this app production component is going to depend on app component. You're probably going to want to do this uh, because there are probably going to be dependencies that you're going to need in this uh, new uh, production component. Um, and we're going to refer back to that salad module that we just uh, modified. And the other thing we had to change is that we can't, we can no longer just get a salad. <clears throat> we have to, we have to wrap it, wrap it in a thing called a listenable feature. And this is kind of similar to uh, the the observable uh, in RxJava. Uh, this lets you, like, well, you can't, you just can't, you can't get the salad immediately, but it will kick off. The, the, the dependency graph to go and build a salad. <clears throat> so how do you use this listenable feature? Well, first, you need some way of like, you need to get the app production component. Um, I have some uh, code on GitHub that will show you how to do this um, in terms of wh where to put it. I guess there are, other there are, there are many ways of, of, of uh, holding on to the production component. So. And you probably also have an app component in your app already anyway, so you could probably do something similar. Um, but so you, you get a hold of the, the app production component, uh, and you do this thing where you do features, add callback, kind of similar to subscribing to uh, an observable. And when that uh, callback completes, uh, you have your salad, and then you can do whatever you want. Uh, with it, uh, what's important to note is that you can you can also add uh, the thread that the callback will be called on, kind of similar to uh, observe on with uh, RxJava, and that's something you can play around with to try to like eke out a little bit more of like uh, of of performance. Um, but that comes back to the point I was trying to make earlier with w w once you've created this thing, you're on the wrong thread. And you probably want to do something else on another thread. So that's something to keep in mind. You, 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 now that you're doing these things asynchronously, <clears throat> the thread that you're on matters. 
So uh, in this case, I didn't add uh, any spe uh, specific thread, so the um, uh, callback will be called uh, uh, on the main thread. So I skipped over something earlier. Uh, with your production component, you have to specify an executor module. And uh, well, well, the real thing you have to specify is this annotation called at production, uh, which specifies uh, the thread that your uh, dependencies will be created on. So uh, I think this is like the default uh, one that they show in the docs is this uh, cache thread pool. Um, so I don't have to, I'm not going to go into details, but basically it'll, it'll create multiple threads uh, to <clears throat> create your dependencies on. Uh, and the, the great thing about this is that, well, in theory, you could have like four threads and you can be creating all these things like the fish and the, the rice and the cucumber and, and tomato all at the same time. And then uh, those dependencies can go and once those are created, you can create uh, your, your, your downstream dependencies. Uh, <clears throat> and then that can be used, you know. So now you've basically collapsed what looked like, uh, say, like eight units, eight, eight things uh, being created serially down to like, uh, here I guess they're, they're, they each have two dependencies. So now, now we're down to like two uh, thing emoji units of, of time. Uh, to get to your bento box. Um, and this is something that Dagger producers makes it a lot easier to do, and it's much harder to do in RxJava. Uh, so in RxJava, we had to go and specify uh, the thread that the dependencies created on. So you can imagine that uh, if, if the, the, the fish and the rice were both observable, uh, in order to create uh, the sushi, you need to be observing both observables. Uh, and and there, there are ways of doing that. I think one of them is like observable dot, like from latest. Uh, but basically, you're writing all the, the code to, to that's merging the work from different threads yourself. Uh, and I don't know, if, if you don't have a lot of dependencies, then it may be uh, easier to do it that way, especially it's, uh, uh, it is hard to migrate to uh, Dagger producers, and I'll show you why in a little bit. But uh, RxJava may be easier to, do, to implement uh, right off the bat. Cool, so uh, we've been talking a lot about sushi. I moved to rice balls. That probably didn't make any sense to you. <laughs> uh, but uh, we're going we're gonna to assume that rice balls are made from fish, uh, rice, and cucumbers. Why? Uh, it will make sense in the next slide. So let's say you have this de dependency, the, the cucumber here, that needs uh, uh, to, to cross the boundary. So before, uh, on, the, on the left side, uh, we were doing everything on the main thread. And on the right side with the salad, we were, doing, we were making this, the salad uh, uh, on the background thread in uh, some sort of like uh, dependency injection creation thread, dependency thread. Uh, so what do you do if you need uh, to cross that boundary? You, you have something that <clears throat> you need from the background thread, right? So uh, this, this a cucumber needs to make it, it, make it makes its way to the main thread before the rice ball can be created. Well, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, provides can't depend on producers. And that's one of the big constraints of dagger, dagger producers. Uh, and I hope, oh, I'm just going to point out the joke. <laughs> uh, the things on the bottom are produce. I thought it was really clever, but maybe not. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> uh, so provides can't depend on producers. And that means if you want to move, say, like uh, uh, OKHP, uh, to a background thread, but in all over your, your activity code, you have add inject uh, whatever ser service, like say for us, I guess it would be a Tumblr service. Uh, you, well, you can't do it because your, your uh, add inject 
as base uh, requires app provides. So then now like you're kind of well now I have to move uh, Tumblr service off to the background thread and it's just like annoying. Um, so there are, there are, there are a couple solutions uh, to this. Uh, either your app provides uh, you can you can move your cucumber to, to to the main thread and then your your background thread is just is in the background so uh, your user isn't worried about it so it'll just wait for the cucumber to be created uh, before it can make the salad. Um, but another thing you could do is that uh, <clears throat> you can also move the uh, the cucumber to the background thread, and then uh, oh, you can move the cucumber. You can keep the cucumber in the background thread, and then you can move the the rice ball to the background thread also. Um, so this has the downside of now the user is sort of uh, waiting for this rice ball to be created, uh, but since you you don't have the the problem where uh, the main thread that provides depends on produces. Uh, maybe you could show a spinner or something. Um, and when it's ready, it can be delivered back to the, to the main thread when it's finished. Um, cool. So I don't know if everyone got all of that. <laughs> so there's some other kind of, kind of like, I don't know, they're, I don't know how to call them, but they're like clever little tricks that I, I found when implementing Dagger producers uh, at Tumblr. Um, one of them is uh, to sort of like abuse the listenable feature. Uh, and, one, and one way of doing this is that if you have, say, a, a logger interface, and let's say whatever activity you have um, has uh, needs a logger, uh, but your logger is like takes a long time to initialize. It depends on uh, a lot of like heavy dependencies. Uh, one thing you can do is uh, create an alternative implementation. Uh, all it does is uh, defer the logging by taking, say, the string here, and we're going to go and and wait for the the real logger to be created. Uh, before logging. So basically, <clears throat> every single time you call log on this deferred logger, it will keep adding callbacks to this future, <clears throat> like, like, a, like a queue. And then when the, the real logger is created, uh, it will go and log, it will go through the entire queue and then like log all the things that you wanted to log. <clears throat> uh, you can do something similar with uh, RxJava also, but I think it's a little bit, uh, I don't know if it's trickier. It might be trickier. <laughs> uh, and this is also maybe a little bit too clever, but uh, <coughs> uh, you can, you're, because now your, because your logger was in, uh, a, sort of a, being created in a background thread, uh, it has to be at produces and so on. Uh, well, if you still want to add inject your, your logger, you can create another m module, uh, a main thread module, uh, where you go and uh, grab the app production component and uh, create. So this will, this will give you a reference to that listenable feature uh, that we need here. Uh, and then instead of returning the real logger, you return just the just deferred logger. And that's a big, I mean, that's the really nice thing about uh, uh, writing dependency injection uh, sort of with interfaces, so in theory correctly, <laughs> uh, is that you can do something like this where you go and, and, and wrap the, the real logger with this deferred logger. Um, and another, another sort of like, uh, semi clever thing is uh, a lot. Of, so one thing that I, that I encountered a lot uh, when implementing Dagger producers uh, was that uh, because I can no longer rely on uh, add inject uh, for uh, say let's go back to Tumblr service. Um, 
I had to go and and first of all remove that and but then like there's so much there's so much there's so many fields that require uh, the the t uh, Tumblr service to be to be there and one sort of like quick thing you could do is uh, after you uh, uh, say change your, your Tumblr service to be lazy um, you can also you, you can also convert the listenable feature uh, to uh, a lazy uh, sort of the, the, to conform to the lazy interface and one of the big issues with listenable feature is that when you call get it's going to throw these exceptions if uh, something goes wrong I've never actually seen these exceptions get thrown. I don't know. I don't know if that ever, if Ron has ever seen them. But I have, we have Dagger producers running at a production app right now. <laughs> uh, and I haven't seen them. But you have to catch them because they're, they're checked exceptions. Uh, and one way around it is to go and, and catch them and, and conform them to the lazy interface. And then uh, otherwise, like, uh, <clears throat> if you don't throw the exception, then you can uh, get uh, well, you, well, you have the object. But remember, in this instance, when you call get, this thing is being created on the main thread. So this is just, for, for us, it was just a big stopgap uh, until we can figure out some way of rewriting an, our entire architecture to not assume that our networking uh, layer would be ready. Cool. So I went through all that stuff. And the big question is, should you use asynchronous dependency injection? And the answer is probably not. Because <laughs> we went through a lot of work to get this. I don't know. I want to say, say it took me like two or three months to do this. And uh, I didn't get a lot of, we didn't get a lot of gains from it. Um, the, there are a lot of, there, there's, here, so here are three reasons why not to, not to use it. Um, there, there's a lot of mental overhead and a lot of code extra code you need in order to, to implement uh, asynchronous uh, DI. Uh, a lot of libraries that you use, like say a lot of analytics libraries, may not necessarily, like they just might init on the main thread and it's just like, well, what am I going to do? Um, and also your dependency tree is likely to be deep. You're not, your app isn't going to be uh, necessarily faster just because you create all these de dependencies asynchronously if all these dependencies if, if like say one of your dependencies depends on another dependency depends on another one depends on another one uh, and th that that just basically means they need to be created uh, serially so then kind of well what are you gonna do about that uh, so here's one example uh, so we use a Facebook's image loading library called fresco it depends on OKHP. Uh, well, at least in our case, it doesn't have to. Um, but we, we use OKHP, so we want to use, uh, we want Fresco to also use OKHP. Um, uh, so part of this library uh, has a thing called uh, simple draw -E view, which is just how, it's just like it's a replacement for image view. Uh, but it requires Fresco to be initialized. Uh, and Obviously, simple draw -E view is a, is a view, so then we're gonna like want to put it in our XML. So, if you remember all the way back from one of the first few slides, uh, the this if if activity layout requires simple draw -E view, uh, then <clears throat> that means uh, Fresco uh, must be initialized before like your your activities uh, laid out. So we can't do this asynchronous dependency injection thing. Uh, and now OKHP must be created before uh, your, your layout is inflated. And then now your main thread is just blocked on OKHP. Um, so there, there, are, there are ways of fixing this. And, and this is actually what we're looking into now. But it's just, it's just not going to be pretty. Because I mean, I would like to put uh, image views in my layouts. Otherwise, like. We're gonna have to go and, and put view stubs in, or we're gonna have to have, uh, uh, we're gonna have to like put image views after Fresco is initialized on a background thread. So like, the so Fresco would be initialized, uh, and it's gonna notify the main thread that it's ready, and then you can add your images uh, to your screen, which is kind of weird, and also a lot of work. Um, cool. So that's very unfortunate. <laughs> So, the way I, I would 
sort of express the, what I've learned is that asynchronous dependency injection is a last resort. You're trying to squeeze uh, the last uh, 100 or 200 milliseconds out of your, your sort of activity startup time. Uh, but in all likelihood, like, there's probably easier gains. Uh, it's probably going to be a lot easier to go and remove all dependencies that you don't need. Uh, like go go to your product manager and be like, do we really need two analytics libraries? You know, uh, <clears throat> and or or there and, and there are probably other things you can look into first before you look into asynchronous <coughs> dependency injection, just because you want to keep all your de dependencies uh, on on activity creation or app creation. So cool, that's the end of my talk. And yeah, I mean, you can see the code that I've been put, I put up, and that's my Twitter.